I just come back in to the campground set up. I just have a quick test of the radio. I've gone to just check my lights on the dash and this is what's happened now. So, I'm pretty certain it's not the batteries because I can, I can jump start from the secondary battery and nothing's come on the dash. So I'm thinking the ignition switch has failed. And this is a new ignition switch I replaced on my last trip in 2015. So I'm thinking it could, could have failed. So I'm going to have to pull this dash off, get my sort of look on the back there of the ignition switch and see what's going on. But that's why I'm doing a shakedown trip first before I head further in inland, further west, where trying to get spare parts after Kanamala might be really difficult. So it's not a major issue. I can start this car, I can pull pull the ignition out and jump jump start a few wires. I've got plenty of 12 volt electrical stuff on board. I can, you know, do a workaround. So I get to work and see if I can diagnose this problem. But I'm pretty certain it's the ignition switch. Yeah, it's one of those things, you know, I've had two different mechanics look over my vehicle. It all passed okay, if you know, the issues, but of course, once it hits, hits some of these outback tracks, it can be pretty corrugated, rough, things start shaking. It's probably the glue that holds the back contacts on, on the back of the ignition switch is, is failed and popped off. That's my guess anyway, because yeah, it's completely non-responsive, which is not right. It's not the starter motor because I can get that going now and again if I hold it just right, the starter motor goes, but there's no lights on the dash which tells me the other power supply is not working. Okay, just pretty easy, you can see it here. I turn it like this. I just push my finger back on it and it disconnects. So it's just loose on the back. So I think it hasn't disconnected completely. Whoa. Hasn't disconnected. It's connected completely, but I've got a uh, glue on board, so I might just need to pull it off, get some aerodite glue on it, really glue it down hard, and maybe put some extra duct tape around it as well, and that should secure it. So it's it's still repairable, thankfully. It hasn't fallen apart like the last one. So you see this movement here in the back. That's what's causing the ignition to, to shut off. The glue around here has sort of failed, and so that extra couple mil of play causes the ignition key not to lock in and it it won't hold its place. So an easy fix for me. Uh, unfortunately I can't take it off to glue it because it's got security bolts and I've already snapped one of the bolts off that would, which would require me to drill it out again. I don't have probably a bolt the right thread and size. So I'll glue it in situ, I'll get some aerodite made up, stick as much in there as I can, clamp it on and just Wait, and that should hopefully get rid of the play. And then I'm back on the road. Easy fix. Okay, I'll just stay here like this for now. Put some pressure against it. Might be five minutes or so, but once that first lot sets, I'll mix up a second batch and just do a double layer. Glue on glue. Really try and get it to stick. The last thing I want is this failing when I'm like driving on a highway and you know I pull out in front of a truck and suddenly my car stops, which is what could happen. So even once I do this, I might get some duct tape and try running some strips of duct tape around it just so it all stays together. But I think the Aerodite should do a pretty good job. So plan A didn't quite work. The glue doesn't seem to be holding very very well, it just scratches off the surface. So I think it's too smooth. So I'm gonna have so I've I've drilled out the one security bolt. I'm going to pull out the whole unit. And that way I can roughen it up with sandpaper, get it really nice and and textury so the glue can actually hold onto something. Okay, it's done. Off. The culprit. You can see that play is what's causing it. It has this really poorly crimped off connections here. It meant to hold it together. Those are just, I guess, worn out. So that should be all the way down there. 
<clears throat> so I'll rough this up a bit more, put some more glue in and try and push these together in further and see if that can hold it all together. So simple part, it's just, yeah, it's such a shame. I think it's a genuine Lucas part, but it's just not made for Australian conditions, those tiny little imprints to hold the, the backing plate on. And if that comes off, that's all your electrical contacts. That's the end of the driving. Well, that's got rid of most of the plate. <clears throat> now glue it all in together again, file it up, glue it up just to double Double ensure it that it won't happen again. This needs something it can hold on to, it's just too smooth. So I put all the glue around, whole way around, and all the little crimp areas, and that should hopefully get me through. So the saga continues, I was just putting it in. And one of these contacts on the back was kind of loose, so I did try fixing it before I put it in, but it's busted off and there's virtually nothing really left on the back contact for me to connect onto. I could try soldering it on, but this is already starting to, to tear through. So it's pretty much buggered, I'd say. Any repair I do couldn't really be trusted once I head bush further. So I think it may mean the end of this uh, ignition switch. So the original switch is a complete bust. I've given up on it. Never mind. I've got enough stuff on me to jerry-rig MacGyver something together. I've got a switch. This would be my uh, main kill switch. I've got a few other connections I can use to just manually start the car. So I'll show you what I'm doing. Put it together and we'll get moving and keep progressing further on the trip. I'll, there's a th small 3G Telstra phone cell just at the Ranger base so I can get on the phone and order a new part, a new ignition switch and have it sent to Kanamala post office and pick it up there in a few days time. That's the plan. Let's get to work. So this is a quick check to see what wires what. One, one of them will be a positive feed. So I put, I just, I put the battery back on. So this one is, it's non-power. This other big fat one, this would be power. And there's my 12.5 volts coming through. These three, one of these is my low coolant alarm. I've got two others, one's probably an accessory and one's the relay to start the, the, what do you call it, starter motor. So I'll have a quick look, I'll get some connections here. Double check that again. This one over here, power in, quick touch. This white and red one is the starter motor, and I'd say this white and orange one is for accessories. So I carry a bunch of these little double connectors that allow multiple connections to fit together. And I put a few of these together, so I've got the two main feeds, one, one power feed and one heading out. I flip the switch on and all the power comes on. When I want to start the car, the red white, that's for my starter motor. I can just touch it against here. And I've got a car. And that's my jerry rig for the time being. So that's what I'll use until I get my new part in Kanamala. So I'll pack up all this now, head to the Ranger base, make a phone call, see if I can get some spare parts ordered and shipped express straight to Kanamala post office. Here are the old switch, it's done pretty well. You always carry a spare switch with you when you're traveling, just in case something does fail on your main board. Gives you an option. G'day, I hope you've enjoyed this film. If you'd like to assist in the creation of more videos without being committed to a monthly Patreon subscription or spending any additional money, click on this link, how you can help or several ways you can contribute to my productions. Thanks.